reviewing SSX3 70 videos ago, I finally decided to return to the franchise and review the predecessor, SSX Tricky on the PlayStation 2. SSX Tricky was released on November 5th of 2001 on the Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and the Game Boy Advance. Now I haven't played the original SSX that came out the year prior, so I don't have much to compare to right now, so I'll get to that one after maybe another 70 reviews later. Just joking. Hopefully it should be a lot sooner than that. I do own the original, but I really just wanted to talk about Tricky first considering I played it a lot as a kid. I remember when I first played the SSX games, I always refer to them as the Tony Hawk of snowboarding games, just because of the ridiculous tricks that you could do in these. The biggest thing that I would say that SSX had going for it when these games came out were the characters that were created for this. SSX Tricky especially made the characters feel more alive in this one, my favorites being Zoe, Simon, and Eddie who was voiced by the awesome David Arquette. They even got people like Macy Gray to voice Sia, Billy Zane for Brody, and Patricia Velasquez who played Anaksuna Moon in the Mummy movies. The voice cast is great and the behind the scenes footage of them is really fun to watch. So SSX Tricky has three different modes you can play, race, show off, and time trials. The two big ones you'll be focusing on is racing and show off. Racing is a three heat system against multiple opponents while show off is a solo event with one round attempts. You can unlock the tracks a lot quicker by just doing the show off challenges. The racing events can take quite a while to complete considering that each heat, depending on the track, can take about upwards of 5 minutes to complete. The tracks that were created can be really fun due to how unique each track is from each other. My favorites being Garibaldi, Elysium Alps, and the Tokyo Megaplex. The show off events have these giant colored snowflakes that when collected can multiply your trick score by 2, 3, or 5 times higher. Doing these events have changed the original look of the track by adding more ramps and rails to grind on. This makes for moments where you can check out the tricks for each snowboarder. Now while most of the characters can do the same tricks, each snowboarder has a unique trick that they can all do. And depending on the type of board that you have, whether that's a trick or long board, they both have different types of tricks that you can perform as well. While you are snowboarding, you also have objectives from what's called trick chapters you can complete. Completing these chapters will unlock you new outfits for each snowboarder. Each snowboarder has a slew of different outfits to choose from on how you wish your character to look like while you're racing. By finishing races and show off events you will also rank up which allows you to boost your stats on how well you either take corners, stay on your board, or how fast you are. The more snowboards that you unlock will also be able to increase these stats as well. The sense of speed is great and performing tricks is loads of fun. The only downside is that you must make sure that you're performing these tricks correctly by getting your border back in their right side up position or else you will bail. In SSX3 they fixed this by automatically doing it for you, which I guess could be seen as a hand holding mechanic so I guess if you bail it's just a skill issue, but take it how you like. Now in order to perform uber tricks you must fill up your boost bar, you can do this in a couple of ways either perform a crazy amount of tricks or knock down your opponent. Knocking down an opponent will automatically increase your boost meter. If you are able to fill up each letter in the word tricky, you are able to get an unlimited boost bar for the remainder of the course. So doing the tricks is a great incentive to get the unlimited boost because it could be a great help doing the race events. After each event, you can also watch your replay on how well you did, which is a really cool feature. The biggest thing I liked with this game compared to the other ones were the interactions with the other snowboarders. Just before a race you can see where your alliances are with everyone and even maybe see them talk to each other right beforehand which can make for some funny moments. SSX Tricky makes sure to give each snowboarder their own personality, which you can really feel during the races and when you rank up you get this quick video of them which really shows off their personality. If there was anything I could complain about SSX Tricky is that the music is not all that great, it's just very generic techno music while in SSX3 they had actual licensed music that you could listen to. The menu system can also feel like it takes forever to get through. Although I do like how there is an announcer for everything you select, it really gives that arcade feel to it. The DVD features it comes with is very entertaining as well as you can watch how the game was made and all the hard work and thought process it took to make this game how it is. SSX Tricky is a very fun video game and it still holds up really well in 2023. I still think SSX3 is the best one, granted I haven't played the first one or 
on tour yet, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Until then, SSX3 is still my favorite among the SSX video games. I recommend anyone who enjoys these types of games to pick this one up if you haven't already. Guys, my name is Pedro Ordonez, also known as Gamelight7. Please subscribe, comment, like, thumbs up, do whatever you guys can to support this channel. Let me know which SSX game is your favorite in the comment section down below, and I will catch you guys next time in my next video. Peace out.